SCP-7179. E is for eternity. What happens after we die? You're certainly not going to find a conclusive answer to that question in an SCP video, but the SCP universe does provide a number of potential examples. In the SCP universe, people have reincarnated, gone on to fantastical realms, gone to hell, or even continued to consciously rot in endless despair and pain. All of these could be true, but none of them are ever presented as being that pleasant, and SCP-7179 is no exception, even though it looks pretty decent at first glance. SCP-7179 refers to an unknown number of cubic extra-dimensional spaces, measuring approximately 10 kilometers on each edge. Upon any human's death, their consciousness is transported to an instance of 7179, where they will physically re-manifest in the same state as they were upon death, except in perfect health. Based on limited observation and experimentation, there are no known cases of human death where the consciousness does not appear in one of the extra-dimensional spaces. Aside from insignificant differences between each of them, instances of SCP-7179 are functionally identical. Each space is an oceanic environment, with a single tropical island in the center. The environment of the space remains at a consistent temperature that is of adequate comfort to the deceased individual. Furthermore, these spaces never display stormy or otherwise violent weather, and the sun perpetually remains directly above the island, leaving it in eternal daytime. As there seems to be no natural wind in the space, there is no natural water activity either. Individuals attempting to leave will simply end up on the opposite edge of the same space, with 7179 acting as a functional omni-lock. Additionally, the passage of time within the space is highly inconsistent with that of baseline reality. Plant life in the space bears several different species of edible tropical fruits. Other fruits of unknown species are also present, which are analogous to substances such as alcohol, methamphetamine, and cocaine. Animal life includes several varieties of tropical birds, butterflies, and a few instances of domestic pigs. On the coast of each island is a beach house, which contains various amenities and furniture for sustainable living. Each house is home to up to three human beings, of sexual preference to the inhabitant, seemingly bearing no will of their own, and are completely loyal to the deceased, but are otherwise completely identical to normal humans. Injuries suffered by humans within the space heal at a normal rate, although death is impossible. Seemingly fatal injuries are thus recoverable, albeit quite painfully. The Department of Tactical Theology was able to fully observe an instance of 7179 using the experimental intelligent soul interface construct Dante.ISIC. The construct is mimetic in nature and fuses with the consciousness via the noosphere, allowing data to be relayed back to the physical world. Dante.ISIC was covertly applied to Paul Hiddleston, a 34-year-old man diagnosed with untreatable brain cancer, who perished shortly after the construct was applied. His consciousness was transported to an instance of SCP-7179, where he arrives, standing next to a small beach house. Three women, appearing to be in their mid-twenties, walk out of the house to greet him. After gaining his composure and becoming accustomed to his surroundings, he finds himself comfortable and begins to engage in frequent pleasurable activities, such as eating, drinking, drug use, and intercourse. After two years of time, Paul starts to drink and partake in mind-altering fruits with much greater frequency, more than any other activities. After another year, he starts neglecting to eat at all for considerable periods of time, occasionally attempting to converse with the women but is frustrated by their lack of agency or individuality. After a total of five years in the space, he ceases his former activities altogether, spending much of his time wandering the space. 
A year later, he becomes panicked and attempts to leave, building a raft from one of the island's trees. Each time he reaches the edge, however, he appears on the opposite side. After several attempts, he collapses in despair for multiple days, until he regains his composure and continues his prior activities. In the next year, he uses the wildlife and plant life on the island to begin pursuing culinary activities. He constructs basic farms and pens to keep and breed animals, and his mental state improves as he continues to develop his skills. Eighteen years in, Paul has become an expert in cooking, having both replicated dishes from memory and created new ones, showing no signs of ceasing as he begins attempting to cross-breed various plants. Thirty-seven years in, he continues his endeavors, although he begins to show signs of weariness and boredom. Forty-four years later, Paul has once again regressed into a depressive state, and has sought out other ways to occupy his time, eventually beginning to study construction. He starts building tools and equipment for building, and twenty years later, after a great deal of trial and error, he has assembled his first house, and continues building. After a total of 287 years in the space, through constant maintaining of trees and frequent building projects, he is able to cover the island with rudimentary structures. He then focuses his efforts towards maintaining and upgrading the structures until he has mastered their fortification. 129 years later, through study, experimentation, and experience, he has managed to fully fortify each structure into usable housing. He begins expanding his structures, adding extra stories and decor, as well as building various watercraft. After another 434 years, his efforts have slowly started to wind down again, as his ability to produce lumber and harvest natural resources reaches equilibrium with his construction expansion. He starts to tear down and rebuild structures in new ways, continuing to remix them. Having spent 2,009 years in the space, he starts to show worsening symptoms of depression and anxiety, and he starts to seriously consider the concept of endless life here. His mental state continues to degrade as he searches for ways to keep a sound mind. 5,478 years in, Paul starts tearing through his structures without reason, tearing down the whole village in several months. He starts rebuilding again. 11,902 years in, he attacks the three women, tearing their bodies apart. He shows symptoms of severe stress after doing so, and attempts but fails to take his own life by drowning himself. He continues to build over time, but intersperses his projects with bodily harm to himself. 7,698 years later, the three women are fully reassembled, and by this point Paul has grown numb to the concept of violence, beginning to perform bodily experimentation on them. After a total of 124,000 years, Paul builds a crude structure designed to crush him to death under the weight of several thousand tons of lumber and stone. Upon activation, it completely mangles and destroys his body. 776,000 years later, Paul's body has fully healed. While the experience appears to have been unbearably painful for him, the stimulus allows him relief from the boredom. He repeats the process in multiple different fashions. After 5.8 million years in the space, he burns himself alive, fully reducing his body to ashes before the fire naturally dissipates. He eventually fully heals after 12.2 million years, and makes many similar self-destructive attempts upon himself, each time growing more numb to the experience. After spending 1.2 billion years inside of the space, he ceases to exhibit any rationality as he struggles to find new stimuli. 8.5 billion years in, he tries to leave again, and fails. 30 billion years in. Paul looks towards the sun. It has not set. With one trillion years spent in the space, Paul ceases all physical activity, as no experience is able to provide him with new stimuli. 
After five times the factorial of 10 to the 28th power years, Dante reports that all potential permutations of particles within the space have been theoretically reached. Finally, after factorial 10 to the 100th power years, Dante reports that one second of eternity has passed. Eternity is a word that occasionally gets thrown around somewhat casually, often in religious discussions, without really pondering the implications of such a thing. Human consciousness wasn't really designed to fully comprehend eternity, let alone actually experience it, and there's no hope that anyone's mind could realistically hold up against such a scenario. SCP-7179 is somewhat similar to SCP-2718 and is certainly inspired by it. But while 2718 seems to be a cruel happenstance of existence that no one realized before, 7179 comes off as somewhat more engineered in design. It's almost as if this afterlife was designed by an alien consciousness that believes that this is what humans are looking for after they die, an endless paradise of physical pleasures, without really understanding what a hell it would become.